Uh, I'm Daniel, the founder of Zep AI, and we build memory infrastructure for AI agents. And I'm going to tell you that you're doing memory all wrong. Well, it may not be you directly, but it may be the framework that you're using to build your agents. I also think that knowledge graphs are awesome, otherwise why would we be here, right? And you should be using them for agent memory, not just for graph rag. So before I dive into expanding on my hot takes, I wanna to touch on why memory is so important. So we're re routinely building agents that forget important context about our users. All that dynamic data that we're gathering from conversations between the agent and the user, all the data, business data from our applications, line of business applications, et cetera. There's so much richness about who the user is, and yet we're not enabling our agents with that data. And our agents respond as a result generically or hallucinate even worse. And this, this definitely isn't the path to AGI, or more concretely, retaining our customers. So memory isn't about semantically similar content. RAG does that really well. And when I, when I talk about RAG here, I'm primarily talking about vector database-based RAG, uh, not necessarily graph RAG. But consider the stylized example where we have learned a brand preference for Adidas shoes. And unfortunately, Robbie's Adidas shoes fall apart, so he's rather unhappy. So the preference changes. However, Robbie's follow-up question to the agent where he asked what sneakers he should purchase is most similar to the first Adidas fact. And so if we were using a vector database, that fact may be at the top of the search results and the agent responds incorrectly. So when using RAG, each fact is an isolated and immutable piece of content. And this is a real problem. The three facts on the left exist with no understanding of causality. Semantic search can't reason with uh, the why things change over time. And this is why RAG approaches fail as memory. RAG lacks a native temporal and relational reasoning. And none of this should be a surprise. Under the hood, we're just working with similarity in an abstract space. There's no explicit relationships between these embeddings these vector representations of the facts that we've generated for our memory. However, when we look at knowledge graphs, we can define explicit relationships. Graphs can model the why, and at ZEP we've got them to model the when as well, behind the preference change, which adds a temporal dimension that your agent can reason over. And this structural difference is fundamental to how memory should work. So which is a good segue to Graffiti. Graffiti is Zep's open source framework for building real-time dynamic temporal graphs. And it addresses these exact problems. Graffiti is temporally aware and graph relational. You can find it on GitHub. Uh, go to git.new forward slash graffiti. It has uh, 10,000 plus stars, almost 11,000 quadrupled within the last six weeks, so thank you everybody who's tried out graffiti and loved it. So let's dive into how each of these attributes of graffiti works. So this is the secret source. Graffiti extracts and tracks multiple temporal dimensions for each fact. It identified when a fact is valid and becomes invalid. On the right hand side you can see how when we're using the example that I uh, illustrated a few slides back how graffiti would parse those different time frames. And this enables temporal reasoning. What did the user prefer in February? And it can answer questions that RAG simply cannot handle. Or it enables your agent to answer questions that RAG simply cannot handle. And so when we look at what RAG can do, we actually sit with a bunch of contradictory embeddings with no resolution in the vector database. So if we're updating the brand preference, we'll have a new brand preference 
fact in the, in the vector database. However, graffiti understands that broken shoes invalidate the love relationship, which creates a causal relationship between those three events in the previous slide. Broken shoes result in disappointment, which results in a brand preference change. Graffiti doesn't delete the history of facts as they change, as they're invalidated, but marks them invalid, rather. And so we store a sequence of state changes on the graph, which allows your agent to then reason with those state changes over time. So for example, the next time I come back to the e-commerce agent to purchase shoes, it's not going to recommend the Adidas shoes to me. And here's the resulting graph, a closer approximation to how humans might process and recall changing state over time. On the graph, we can see that the existing Adidas brand preference is still there, but it has an expired at date. We also see that there's a new brand preference for Puma shoes, which is, in, which is valid, and it doesn't have an invalid at date. So graffiti doesn't abandon embeddings. They're still incredibly useful. Graffiti uses semantic search and BM25 full text retrieval to identify subgraphs within the broader graffiti graph. And these can be traversed using graph traversal techniques to develop a richer understanding of memory. So we can find adjacent facts that might fill out the agent's understanding of memory. And the results are then each fused together. And so this offers a very fast, accurate retrieval approach. And graffiti has a number of different search recipes built into it. So you can really explore how to take different approaches to um, retrieving data for your particular agent. So a little bit of a bonus. When we look at recent changes that we've added to graffiti, we allow developers now to model their business domain on the graph. Because a mental health application will have very different types of things it needs to store and recall from memory to an e-commerce agent. And so graffiti allows you to build constructs, custom entities and edges that represent the business objects within your particular uh, business or application. And so here we have an example of a media preference where we've been learning um, all about a user's preferred podcasts and music. And we have defined an actual structure here for media preference. And what this does is it allows us to then also retrieve, explicitly retrieve media preferences from the graph, rather than a bunch of other noise that we might have added to memory. And this ontology really enables you to bring a lot of depth to how memory operates. So I'm not advocating that you replace RAG everywhere. RAG, graph RAG, the various forms of graph RAG, and graffiti each has its strengths and ideal use cases. The key is recognizing when you need each. Graffiti is really strong when you're wanting to integrate incrementally dynamic data into a graph without significant recomputation. It's really strong when you want to model your business domain. It's strong where it has very low latency retrieval. There's no LLM in the path. If you've tried graph rags, they often have an LLM in the path incrementally summarizing the output from the graph. It can take tens of seconds. Graffiti operates in under hundreds of milliseconds. And so the key is recognizing which solution offers to your business, what it offers to your business. And most agent applications could use RAG, a RAG approach, and graffiti. So just summing it all up, agent memory is not about knowledge retrieval. Temporal and relational reasoning is so critical to coherent memory. 
We need to track state changes over time. We need to understand how something like preferences or user traits might change over time. And that's something that contemporary RAG solutions lack. So we published a paper earlier this year uh, describing ZEP's use of graffiti. And it's a deep dive into the graffiti architecture and how ZEP performs as a consequence of using graffiti under the hood. So you can follow the link below to land at the archived preprint if you'd like to take a look. And I'm sure the slides will be available after the talk so you can uh, uh, go to the paper. So a quick plug for ZEP. ZEP go, goes beyond simple agent memory to build a unified customer record derived from both chat history and business data. So you can stream in user chat conversations, but also stream in business data from your SaaS application, from line of business applications like CRM or billing systems. And it builds this unified holistic view of the user really enabling your agent to have an accurate and very comprehensive real-time understanding of the user so it can solve complex problems for that user. So stick around for the Agent Memory Lunch and Learn, which is the next session. It's being led by Mark Bain. And in it, uh, amongst other folks, uh, I'll be demoing Zep's approach to domain-specific memory, built on graffiti's custom ent entities and edges. So uh, thanks for listening to me. Uh, we have a few minutes, so I'm happy to answer questions. And I will, yeah, if there are any. No questions. Oh, there's one over there. Uh, the question was, do you need to use ZEP to use graffiti? No. Graffiti is open source. It's available on GitHub. Uh, you can go to the link, git.new graffiti. And uh, all you'll need today is Neo4j. So our partners, Neo4j, uh, can assist you with a community edition install. And uh, strongly recommend their desktop product. It's wonderful. And you can get going very easily. Another question here? How do you invalidate the other graphs? Are you using Erlang or something else? Yeah. So underneath the hood, how do you invalidate graph edges? Are we using LLMs? So Graffiti makes extensive use of LLMs to intelligently parse incoming data, which could be unstructured or structured. So the unstructured conversation, unstructured emails, um, structured data in JSON format, and fuse it together on the graph. And as part of integrating, we're using LLMs to identify, in a pipeline, identify conflicting facts. And so that's where we get this ability to go from broken shoes to disappointment to a switch in brand preferences. Um, the LLM is able to understand emotional valence of uh, the events that it is seeing. One more question. How do, we handle inv how do we handle invalidation of facts? Yeah, depending on the context. So the question was, how do we handle revalidation of facts if a state flips back to a prior state? And so it depends on the context. A new edge may might be created that represents this uh, a uh, success effect, or the invalid update might be nullified. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. So why can Graffiti do real-time updates, but Microsoft GraphRag cannot? So Microsoft GraphRag is uh, an oversimplification is summarizing document chunks or documents at many different levels and creating repeated summarizations at different levels. So a summary of a summaries of a summaries, et cetera. And that's very computationally expensive. 
So if any of the underlying data changes, you're ending up with a cascading number of summarizations. It's expensive and complicated. Graffiti is designed to identify specific nodes and edges that are implicated in an update and then is able to invalidate with a, a, a surgical precision the edges that are implicated in the conflict. Or we just add new edges or, or uh, nodes into the graph where that's relevant. So we're able to use um, a variety of search uh, pipelines as well as a number of different heuristics to really make very focused changes in the graph, which are lightweight and cheap. Here we go. Yeah, that's a good question as well. So there are two ways that uh, graffiti operates. The last question. The, the first one is that graffiti will build the ontology for you and will very carefully try to deduplicate edge and node types. Secondly, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we allow you to define an ontology using Pydantic, Zod, uh, Go, Structs, et cetera. All right, I think we're at time, so thank you, everybody.